Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. A brand new trailer dropped, the Third Fleet trailer. It was shown during the PlayStation Experience or the PSX livestream. I have literally just woken up, but as always, I want to bring you guys a complete breakdown. So if you do enjoy this, then a like will be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. First things first, I will say it's definitely a trailer that you will want to watch yourself. So I've linked it down below. It is a much more story focused trailer. There are a lot of scenes with different characters, a lot of dialogue, so it is something you want to watch without me necessarily speaking over the top. However, jumping between the story parts, there are still some rather interesting things, most notably some gameplay of the Zorda Magdalos fight, some gameplay on the back of Zorda Magdalos, as well as a couple of additional returning monsters to add to the roster, and also a new collaboration. So let's just step through the trailer and speak about the most interesting stuff. First things first, the trailer starts with your usual environmental scenes, panning over areas we've seen before, the Coral Highlands, shoots up this new interesting structure. Not entirely sure what this building is. This internal area looks like a research center, like a library or maybe like the headquarters for the guild, because of course at the back you have the big hunting crest. This is not an area I had a chance to explore, so I'm unsure whether it's in Astera or whether it's somewhere else. It almost makes me think of like a higher rank hunting hub, something like that. But again, since it's not somewhere I've seen yet, I think I might lean more towards it potentially being like the sort of headquarters for the guild or something like that, that we will experience during the campaign. However, moving beyond that, we then encounter our first character. Now on the character front, I've met some of these characters while playing through the campaign. And since I can't speak too much about cutscenes or like, you know, the story side of things, I'm gonna kind of gloss over them for the time being, but these are characters that you'll meet during the game. So for the time being, they're not really too relevant to the trailer. But of course, moving over from there, we then get a look at an area we've seen before. This was seen in the Gamescom trailer, the very first time the ship kind of broke into this area. And they're of course pursuing Zora Magdalos. You have the chief of the village, the person that led the initial or the original expedition. To the left is of course the smithy and behind is someone else you will uh, kind of play with along in the campaign. But if we then skip past all of those parts there, because we've seen some of these scenes before, we then get to our very first gameplay segment against Zora Magdalos. Now for those of you guys that are new to Monster Hunter and you wonder how you're supposed to fight a monster that is that big, Typically, whenever you have these large scale monster fights, they are in more bespoke arenas and you'll have weapons like cannons and ballistas that you can use to fire cannonballs and effectively ballista bolts. And that is exactly what we see here. You can see the cannon over there to the right, you can see the ballista. And then you get a closer look, you can see that you can move the cannons to adjust them so you can actually line them up with Zord of Agdalos and you can then load them and fire them at him. So this is typically what you would do if you're like in a situation where you can't really get too close, then this is how you can dish up some damage. And then invariably there'll come a point where you then mount the monster or get close to the monster and then start dealing the damage with your weapons. So that's pretty cool to see. Definitely looks really, really awesome. This is a bespoke stage, so it's not gonna be one of those stages you will typically explore yourself. You know, you won't necessarily run around it like you would the ancient forest or the wild spire waste. This will be one of those maps that you are specifically gonna visit when you fight something like Zorda Magdalos. Skipping forward a little bit, we get a few more shots of characters in various different areas. We of course see again more Coral Highlands, then the Rotten Vale, we of course get to meet another character. Remember that some of these characters you will meet when you are out on expedition. There are characters you can just meet simply by exploring the open world and you can then get quests from them when you're out and about. They're typically smaller quests, but again it's still a chance to interact with different people. We then get to see the big guy himself, Nogigante, just a little bit more gameplay against him. He does look really Really awesome, pretty big when you see him next to the hunters as well. We of course have a hunter here running in in full Rathian gear with Rathian longsword. In this switch over to an insect glaive user there wielding what I believe is the Puke Puke insect glaive. To the left is a hunting horn user and in the middle is a greatsword user wielding, rather interestingly, an Uragan weapon which we'll get to in a moment but that is of course one of the returning monsters. The next scene here we also get a look at another gun, a light bow gun I believe but look at the actual gun itself. That is a very different model to anything we've seen up until now. That looks like a shotgun, essentially. It'll still behave the same way, but it's just a very different model to the sort of bog standard light bow gun model we've seen thus far. We also have a look at a hunter on the right hand side in full Diablos gear with the Diablos charge blade. And the one a little bit closer, a little bit hard to see in truth, especially since I'm watching this video from YouTube. So it's already like down a little bit. If I had a clearer one, I might be able to sort of make that out. So I'll probably revisit this at some point and try and collate all the different armor sets and things we've seen. But for the time being, definitely at least pay attention to that Uragan switch axe. And of course, we also see the hunter there, the Insect Glaive Hunter, wearing full Paolumu gear. 
after that, we actually then get some gameplay of Diablos. Diablos is a fearsome beast. I have fought it in the Wild Spire Waste, and at least when I was playing in Japan, it definitely didn't mess around. I was getting pretty much one shot by him, but of course, scanning through there, we then get some more shots of the environment, some more characters. We have a hunter wearing the bone gear with a Kuruyaku lance fighting in Rathian. You get a chance to see that power guard in action, the guard where you basically sort of sit back and you can then firm and your stamina won't go down while you are power guarding if you get hit. Pretty cool move. We then get to see some palicos coming down again during sort of an interesting cutscene. However, I want to skip forward a little bit just to kind of skip past on the story bits. We then get to see some more gameplay of the hunters running on the back of Zora Magdalos. This hunter, of course, wearing Inga armor with a heavy bow gun. We get some more story cutscenes. And then this. This is really interesting. Now, it's important to bear in mind when you look on the back of Zora Magdalos, there are these little pockets of lava where you know things kind of spew out and whatnot. However, this area here looks remarkably different. It's only shown very quickly. So I think, I think, I could be wrong. Bear in mind this hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but I feel like this is the trailer giving us a very small tease at the next map, a lava or a volcanic map. This is one of those kind of typical maps we would expect in Monster Hunter. There is normally always a volcanic area. There is normally always a tundra area. And up until now, we haven't seen either of these. And again, while on the back of Zora Magdalos, there are some lava kind of pockets. This looks a little bit different to that, so I would be willing to bet this is our first tease of a volcanic map. Plus, we're going to look at a couple of returning monsters. That is, of course, Lavasioth, which is the one that Gelatados is based off of. It's kind of part of the same family, but this one is a returning monster. And also, we have Uragan, which is, again, the one that Radoban is based on. So that is a second returning monster. We also saw, of course, the switch axe earlier was made from Uragan parts. So that is two more returning monsters to add to the list, which is pretty cool. As a rounding out note, there is, of course, this character we meet in the trailer. This is actually someone you meet in the Wildspire Waste. You might meet him in different locations as well, but I actually encountered him. He was sort of hidden up in a rock and you can speak to him. So again, another one of those NPCs you can have some dialogue with, you can get a quest from once you get to a certain part in the game. But that's pretty much it for the main trailer. However, at the end of that, the sort of post credit sequence, so to speak, they announced the next collaboration. Of course, up until now, we've seen the very first collaboration in Monster Hunter World is going to be the Aloy gear from Horizon Zero Dawn. But now, following the announcement of Mega Man 11 the other day, and of course, the uh, Mega Man collection, we now have a Mega Man Palico collaboration. This is really, really cool. It's basically gear for your Palico. You have a helmet, you have a armor piece, and you also have a weapon for him. He has sound effects. He's got this cool sort of cell shaded retro look to him. It doesn't necessarily fit in with the actual overall theme, but this is kind of what Monster Hunter does. It does these wacky collaborations. It just looks really cool. You know, when he's fighting, of course, you have the sound effects, you have the visuals, and also there are some accompanying theme tunes that can go along when you're using some weapons. So basically, for the Mega Man fans out there, this is a chance for you guys to get some of that in your game. So that's pretty much it. That is a quick breakdown of the trailer. As mentioned, there are a few things that I do want to go over in slightly greater detail. I want to see if I can try and get a higher resolution version of the trailer to take a look at some of those armor sets. But for the time being, that is pretty much it. If I missed anything, then by all means, let me know in the comments down below. Bear in mind, I have just woken up, so it's possible I might have missed a couple of things. But for the time being, that is your breakdown. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.